Hey there friends, how's it going? And welcome to my tutorial for the Niagara UI Render plugin for Unreal Engine. I will be working in Unreal Engine 5, but the same steps should apply in Unreal Engine 4, so feel free to follow along. Last time we created this really cool looking button dissolve effect. This time I want to go just a little bit more advanced, and we are going to create a mouse trail that will follow our cursor around. Okay, let's start by creating a new Niagara system. Let's go into our particles folder, right click, go into effects and create a new Niagara system. Once again, we will create a new system from selected emitters. And same as the last time, I will select a simple sprite burst. Let's call it Niagara system mouse trail. Sounds good to me, okay. In here, once again, we can see our only particle. It's currently spawning only at the first frame and then dying. We don't really want it. We want them continuously spawning as the particle system lives. So let's delete the spawn burst. And instead of that, we will add spawn rate. Yeah, this is the one we want to add. Basically here we can specify how many particles we want to spawn per second. Let's do something like 60 by default. Currently they are still spawning at one point, so in the particle spawn, let's add a sphere location, so they will spawn inside of a sphere. And let's make it something like maybe 20. Okay, uh, let's make our particles a bit smaller. So go into the initialized particle, and in the sprite size mode, I will set it to random uniform. Maybe something like few from three to eight. Yeah, that looks better. They're still standing still. So let's try adding point velocity. So they will start bursting outwards. We can still see that it's not infinite loop of particles, right? Just spawning, 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 but it kind of dies at two seconds. So let's go into our emitter state. And over here, we can see our loop behavior. Currently, it's set to uh, loop just once, and the loop is two seconds long. That's not really what we want. We want the loop to be infinite. So now, there is no kind of like weird stopping of spawning. It's just continuously spawning our particles. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, let's make our particles blue because our mouse cursor is. So let's go into color mode and we will do a random blue. Maybe if something like this uh, to maybe blue like this. Okay, uh, it's maybe a bit more intense than I wanted to. So let's decrease the alpha to like 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. So it will be a little bit more subtle. But I promised you this really cool curly effect, so let's do basically the same thing we did in last video. So add a curl noise force and increase the strength a bit, so we can actually see what's happening, maybe to like 800. And decrease the frequency once again, so maybe like 10. And after I don't forget to add the drag, because that's the thing that will make it look less chaotic and actually like it's following a pattern. So maybe something like five. Okay, now that's a bit better, but it's going the same way all the time. So let's go into the curl noise force and we can pan the actual noise. Let's do maybe something like one on the z-axis, so it will curl it curl a bit more, you know, chaotic. Okay, let's try to see how this looks in our actual uh, UI widget. Let's open our menu widget, which is the main widget I'm using for the menu. And this is the widget that will drive our cursor and it will be placed here. Let's go into our Niagara category under our palette and let's drag the Niagara system widget into our canvas panel. I will leave it as the topmost element, so it will be over everything else in the menu. Let's uh, keep it on the top left of the screen and size it to like 20 and 20. That's basically the size of my mouse cursor in game. And 
the particle system will spawn in the middle of it. So that's why I'm putting it as 20 and 20. Let's go into our Niagara system and pick our mouse trail Niagara system. Uh, yes, plugin, please auto populate the remap list for me. And we will select the same glow material we created in the last tutorial. So we will get this nice particle spawning. If you don't know what I did over here, please go watch the previous tutorial where I explained how to do all of this. So now if we go in game and we will play, we can see the particle system here on the top left. That's cool and everything, but it's not really where we want it, right? We want it to follow our mouse cursor on screen. So let's go into our widget, into our graph, and we want to update the position of this uh, Niagara widget every single frame, right? So it will actually follow our mouse cursor. Uh, for that, let's add event tick here. So event tick just fires off every single frame of the game. And uh, first of all, let's get our mouse position on the viewport. This will just return where the mouse is on screen or in our viewport. And let's rename the Nagra system widget to something more sensible, something like mouse trail. Uh, let's grab it over here. And uh, we want to actually move these values, the position X and position Y. Currently it's in canvas panel, so we can just go from here and say we want to get a slot as canvas slot. A slot as canvas slot. And from here we can just call set position. And over here the X and Y will be those two values that are over here. So we can just drag it something like this and connect the mouse position to the new position we want it to be. Okay, let's try that out. So now we can see the particle is actually following our mouse cursor. Let me make those particles a bit larger so you can actually see them even on YouTube. Maybe like five to 12. Okay, hopefully you can see that. So this is a good starting point, but let's try to make those particles just a tiny bit nicer. First of all, let's do the same thing we did uh, for the particle system before. Let's make those particles stretch in the direction of their velocity. So in the particle update, we'll get the uh, sprite size, uh, scale sprite size by speed. And we will, if they're traveling at least thousand uh, centimeters per second, we will scale the Y to five. This will make them stretched maybe a bit more than five. Let's do eight. Okay. And in the sprite renderer, we will set their alignment to velocity aligns. So they will follow their velocity. Okay. I start, I'm starting to like this, but the thing I don't currently like when we play this is that the mouse if the mouse is standing still, it looks like we have a bunch of particles over there. It looks like, for me at least, too much particles. But if you start moving the mouse too fast, you can barely see those particles. So what I want to do is uh, control the amount of particles we're spawning based on the velocity of the mouse. So if we move it fast, we will also spawn more particles. And if we move it slow, then we don't need as many particles. So let's do that. For that, let's modify the spawn rate. Uh, what we want to do is basically lerp between two values. So instead of just uh, having a static number over here, let's add a lerp. So we want to drive the alpha with the velocity of our particle. Because alpha always needs to be between zero and one, I will first add a clamp float. So it will always make sure it's between zero and one. If you want to get the velocity, uh, the velocity in the particle is actually a vector. So we cannot just put it straight in or as a float. We need to get a vector length first. And the vector will be engine owner velocity. But 
this won't really give us a number between zero and one because the velocity can be like thousand or ten thousand, right? It depends on how fast you're moving your mouse. So we need to somehow modify this number a little bit. So let's say we will just go between zero and thousand. So instead of just getting the straight length, I will first put a divide float in here. And the one trick what I did is when I have something in here and I want to change this, and we will just by default uh, remove all the stuff I had there before. So I can just right click on my vector length and copy it. And now when I put divide in there, it will remove all the stuff I had before, but I can just right click on A and click paste and I will get the stuff I had before back in. And I will just divide this by thousand. Okay. And now the last thing you want to set is the A and B values. So the A value will be how many particles do we spawn when the mouse is standing still. I want maybe like 40. Uh, that looks like too much, 20. And when the mouse is moving fast, I want to spawn a lot, so like 600. Okay. So now if we go in game, we can see if the mouse is standing still, there are just like a bunch of idle particles flying around. But if I start moving the mouse cursor, there is a lot of particles starting to appear on my screen. Let's try tweaking the curl noise a bit because I think it's a bit too frequent for my liking. Maybe something like five. Okay, and let's try increasing its strength, maybe like 1500. Okay, I like this, but maybe 10, okay. Okay, that's pretty good. But uh, also, one thing I would like to change is that if you move the mouse cursor faster, I think like the trail we are leaving behind is really thick. I would want to make it more straight lined, a bit thinner. So for that, we can basically use the same thing we did for the spawn rate. We can just go into the sphere location or... Uh, yeah, we can just copy this thing because it will be the same with just different values. Paste it into the sphere radius and instead of uh, doing 20 to 600, we will go do 40 when we are standing still. And if you are moving really fast, we will do something like 10. So it will be much thinner line. Let's try that. So now it's pretty big spawning radius, but as I start moving my mouse faster, you can see the trail is getting a lot thinner. Maybe I would make it a bit more thin. Okay, let's try five. Okay, I like that. Uh, let's just modify uh, some things a bit more. Currently our particles, they all die at the same time. Uh, let's go into the initialized particle and do the random ones again and from like 0 0.5 to 2 seconds that sounds good to me so now if we apply it it will be a bit more random also one thing that i want to add is the scale sprite size node and we will just want to do that uniformly so we will do vector 2d from float and we will use curve to drive our size of our uh, float curve to drive uh, the size of our particles. So when we spawn initially, I want them to be really small, like zero, and then become large really fast. So like 0 0.025, will, they will go fully to one, right? So they will become really small. They will grow really, really fast. And then as they continue their life, they will slowly get smaller. Let's make this a bit smoother. So let's select our curve points, right click on them and press auto. And that just smooths out our curve. Yeah, I like this. We have really cool looking mouse trail effect. There are some things that are still broken. So now pressing play was a bit difficult because once again, I forgot to change the visibility of my particle system to be non uh, hit testable. So I was clicking on the particle system instead on, on the button, right? 
So now that should be fixed. But one more thing is that currently they just disappear all at once when I delete my menu widget. I don't really want that. I want them to just slowly die, right? So let's go into our graph. And this is where I actually remove the widget from the parent. So here where I'm telling it to hide the mouse cursor, we can just get our mouse trail and tell it you will deactivate. And this should take care of them disappearing all at once. And the delay should be probably two seconds since that's the maximum life that they're having, they're keeping on screen. So now if you press play, the particle system deactivates and they all nicely fade away with all other particles. So yeah, that will be it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something. Next time we will take a look on this really cool collect uh, coin effect that will, one day we collect those coins, they will explode and bounce around around the screen bunch. And uh, after that, they will be like attracted to the top left and we will collect them. Yeah, it should be really cool and also a bit more advanced. So hope you guys uh, see you there and have a nice day. Bye bye.